Well, welcome back to another edition of Friday Fruit. We are so glad that you are here. And uh, today I got a little piece of advice for you. What if I said the biggest problem in any of your relationships is actually you? So let's get into it. I thought maybe today with some help of a good friend that we would uh, talk about just four simple things that I think that we can put in everyday practice to help us to be successful in our relationships, whether it's marriage, friendships, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be. Uh, if we put these things into process, it will help us be successful. This is Tim Wood. He is uh, also a teacher here at Bethlehem. Uh, great friend, known Tim for a long time. We've done some youth industry stuff together in the past. Uh, he uh, leads worship here for our chapel class. He also helps lead worship at First Baptist of Watkinsville. So he is a multi-talented, multi-faceted guy, but the thing I love about it the most is he tries to live out scripture on a daily basis. So I value him, value his opinion, and so I'm gonna let him take two of those points uh, today and let him talk to you about those. And uh, really excited uh, for you to get to hear what he has to say today. But in James chapter four, uh, James pretty much starts out with this idea that, uh, or not starts out, but he has this idea that uh, he asks the question, why do you, do you know why you fight and quarrel? Do you know why there's disagreeing uh, amongst you? And the reality is James comes to say that basically we're all selfish. We want what we want, when we want it, how we want it. And then when you put those, that type of person, those, that type of person with another person this exact same way, obviously you're going to have some quarreling that goes on. So James pushes on the, the topic of being selfish, and I think that's a great topic for us to talk about. Um, so with that, um, you know, it's interesting to me that in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, Paul would write that we were purchased, and really our life is not our own anymore. And then he goes on uh, in chapter 6 of Romans to say, don't you, don't you know that the old self has been buried. It was crucified with Christ. And with the resurrection of Christ comes a new self. And in that new self, we have the choice to either operate out of the flesh, which is the old self, which should have been crucified, or we can operate out of the fruit of the Spirit. And I think sometimes we get maybe a little, uh, Tim, I'd like to know your, your thoughts about this. Sometimes I think we think of the fruits of the Spirit as these nine different things. But in reality, I think it's just one. Like, uh, an orange has a peel, skin, different segments, had seeds in it, but it's still just an orange. Right. So, uh, when I think about that, we get the opportunity to operate out of flesh or we operate out of spirit. You know, I think for sometimes we go, oh, well, I'm really good at self-control, but I'm not good at, and we name another fruit of the spirit, but in actuality, I think it's, we're, God's endowed us with all those things. Sure. Well, you know, you and I have talked about this before, uh, Coach Fruit and I, we, we often get to hang out and sort of discuss all sorts of things. But one thing that we've talked about before is an apple tree is only going to produce apples. Correct. And there's different forms of apples. My kiddo, he's two, he loves applesauce. I love apple pie, <laughs> but it's both apples, you know? And so I think maybe, and you talked about being operating out of the flesh and being selfish and then being with someone else who also operates out of the flesh and is selfish, even if that's friendship, romantic relationship, whatever it might be. And I thought when you were sitting there talking about what if I told you that the most, who, who what was it, whoever's the most problematic in the relationship was probably you. Correct. So wh one thing that I thought about that that was really interesting is that if I bring that mindset to every relationship that I'm the issue, and whoever I am in relationship with also brings that mindset, I think you're gonna set yourself up for a lot of success. Right. So for example, in our friendship, if you and I have an issue, and I think to myself, I'm probably the problem here, and you're thinking that same thing, we are going to very quickly find common ground. Because you're gonna be thinking to yourself, how can I be a better friend to Tim? And I'm gonna be thinking the same thing. And I think that's a really good place to be. And you talk about self-control, you know, patience, goodness, kindness, all those different fruits of the spirit. And I think you're right. I mean, it really, they all come from the same place. Right. Yeah. If, if it's an apple tree, apples are gonna come, no matter right. what form they're in. Right. 
Uh, t I think Tim Grace brings up a great point if we take that attitude um, and really point number one, if you want to label it point number one in the alphanumeric system here, point number one would be sacrifice. Just coming into that relationship going, man, I'm the one, so I'm going to just sacrifice. I'm going to take my pride, my ego, my things, I'm going to lay them aside and I'm going to think uh, just sacrificially. And so inside of the context of marriage, whatever that may be for you as in, you know, my wife, I, I do the dishes. And so- I do the dishes. See, that's, nice. that's, that's one of those things where I just go, oh, I'm gonna sacrifice that. Do I want to do them all the time? No, but I'm gonna make the sacrifice. And that really sets us up for success. Uh, you know, that's, it's interesting to me that uh, the example that Christ gave was to come and serve. And, you know, I think about that this time of year, stepping out of heaven and leaving glory and all those things behind to take on just the form of humanity and really sacrificed and of course we think about the in the, the, the cross and that sacrifice but i think about the sacrifice of him serving uh you know taking 12 decide taking 12 men and then serving them showing them sacrificing for them you know i saw a, a tweet the other day that was talking about someone was talking about their relationship with their dad and you said that about taking those 12 men and just living with them and serving them and this tweet about this person's dad it said my dad never taught me necessarily he lived and he let me watch right and yeah. i loved That's that a, yeah. you know and especially like uh, one of my good friends, his word is model. He said, no, 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 don't be by example, just model. Don't worry about the right. leadership aspect of it. And I think that's so true when you were talking about um, when he, he left heaven and took these 12 men and he just lived and he let them watch. Right. And then they changed the world. Kind right, of yes. Yeah. So uh, that would be, so number one would be sacrifice. Are we willing to sacrifice ourselves? Um, and secondly, are we willing to serve? Um, and what Tim said, I think that's a great thing. Like I want to model for my kids mm -hmm. uh, a servant attitude. Uh, my wife and I, we were talking the other night, we do nightly devotions and uh, she said, um, she goes, I know you do your quiet time in the morning, but the boys never get to see you do your quiet time in the morning. And I said, you're absolutely right. And um, so for me, I want to be uh, really, I want to show them what that looks like. Um, they're never going to know what a quiet time is, and they're never going to know what prayer, you know, getting up in the, or early in the morning and praying, and I know Tim has some meditation time that he does early in the morning, and, uh, you know, I'm trying to be more where I ask my, you know, sometimes I'll get one of them up, or I'll take, uh, sometimes it's difficult with two, two little boys, I like to take, like to take them to uh, Chick-fil-A in the morning and just do a devotion with them. How do, how do I pray? What do I read? Uh, but it's a, it's a modeling. Yeah, yeah. It's not it. You're just living. You're yeah. letting them watch. Right. So, uh, so my, my, my two, sacrifice and then service. So we're willing to show that to one another. So that, yeah, it can happen inside the context of a marriage, uh, inside the context of a girlfriend-boyfriend relationship. And it also happens in the context, I think, inside of friendships. Am I willing to sacrifice for Tim? Am I, am I willing to serve Tim? So, yeah, man. Awesome. So, you know, it's funny that we sit here and talk about the fruits of the Spirit and how there are different ones, but they all sort of come from the same pot. With even these words that we're talking about, these four points, they're all interconnected. And I think that's really interesting. Um, so the first word that I'm gonna talk about is the word cherish. And uh, I actually love this word. Um, and one of the reasons is, is that it's an action word. The only, I'm, a, I'm an English teacher, welcome. The only part of speech that cherish is, is verb ever. There is no noun cherish. Right. Um, there's different words that mean cherish in noun form, but cherish is only a verb, so it's an action word, and I love that. It actually comes from the French word cherise, <laughs> um, which means to treat with great affection. So even the word that it comes from is a verb. But the thing about cherishing someone um, is that the action part of it comes from the noun love. So any sort of way that you can cherish someone in action form comes from a pool, if you will, or comes from the, the place of love. So even when you think about um, Psalm 63.3, which is one of my favorite passages as a worship leader, it says, because your steadfast love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. So the reason that we have this action is from a place of love, because I see how good your love is, talking about you know, the Lord's love, of course, now comes the action. So cherishing someone is a verb and it's awesome, but it's second. 
the action of cherishing comes from the place of love, which we can only get from Jesus and His love. 1 John 4, we can only love because He loved us first. first loved us. Um, and so when we start to understand how good His love is, that's where we can tap into, and that's where the action of cherishing someone can come from. And I, I love that word cherish. You know, it's um, it just seems, it's strong. It's a strong word. It's not a, hey man, I like you a little. You know, like, hey yeah. babe, have I told you lately I like you? <laughs> no. Like, this is a strong word. It comes from a place of intense love from the Father. Right. You, know, you know, Tim saying the word cherish reminds me actually the word lavish. Yeah, totally. And just to see how far and beyond God goes to show us that. Yeah. Um, man, awesome. All right, Tim, we got we got another one. I'm so excited about this. Yeah, man. Last word for today is consistency. And consistency and being consistent is important in every phase of life. This is not just in relationships. This is at your job. This is if you're a student, all these things. Consistency is going to set you up for success. And probably the, the way that the Lord has taught me success, the success, the way that He's taught me consistency the most and allowed me to have success in it over the last couple of years is definitely with my son, um, who's coming up on two years old. And um, I've asked the Lord to show me consistency with Him because if you guys didn't know, raising a child is little difficult especially when it's a little redhead and he's just absolutely <laughs> nuts but um you know so what I've really started to put this into my life is I want to be really really consistent with him when it comes to how I'm living and watch letting him watch mm -hmm. but also how I'm treating him as I'm trying to teach him how I live right, yeah. which is of course with discipline and things like that so you know the Lord really started to stir up in me what types of things the Lord disciplines me for. Oh, yeah. You know, the, the yeah. Bible tells us the Lord disciplines mm -hmm. us. And I started to sort of try to channel that into Liam. What sorts of things am I disciplining him for? Right. Lord, would you discipline me for this? Right, yeah. Oh, you wouldn't? Yeah. Hey, congrats, bud. God <laughs> saved you. You know, right, but, yeah. but that, that idea of consistency, when I think about it from a relationship standpoint, really can be summed up in Ephesians 5. And here's what I mean by that. We like to say it all the time, especially us men who are silly. We, we say it jokingly, of course. Wives, submit to your husbands. And then, of course, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. So think about this. Wives, submit to your husbands. Submission. Okay? Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for her. Wait, 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 wait. So he submitted. Right, yeah. So, wives submit and husbands submit. See who can submit more. And it's almost like you were talking about a while ago, the biggest problem being you. If I have this mindset of I am going to submit to my wife as Christ loved the church and gave him so for her, he literally died for the church. That's literally what he did. That's the ultimate form of submission. It is literally just a circle of submission. And that consistency of consistently submitting yourself to one another in service and in love and in cherishing right. and in sacrificial giving and all these things these are the ingredients for a successful relationship right for sure and that's just like really fun to think about and especially to say out loud because it even challenges me as a husband oh, absolutely. like am i consistently right. loving caroline like jesus loved the church right. shocker nope <laughs> but that doesn't mean right. that we can't be intentional right. with the way that we love one another and right. try to be better absolutely so I hope uh, this helps. I mean, it's great work from Tim. I hope those, these things, again, sacrifice, serving, cherishing one another, and then uh, being consistent in our walk and in those actions on the daily. Uh, man, I hope this is helpful. Uh, again, we're just here, uh, two guys, man, trying to do this thing called life and trying to do it from a, a scriptural perspective. So uh, if you want more, uh, you can uh, obviously, you're more than welcome to stop by and check out more videos. There's more stuff. Uh, and I uh, would be honored if Tim would come back on, and I know that he will be. Uh, as soon as I extended the invitation today, he was all over it. So uh, super thankful for Tim. Uh, man, keep worshiping, and God bless.